me because it was on my jack. It was on my watch. You know, Suge responded. He, he came out here in the week. Suge seen him. And Suge chased him, tried to box him in and block him in. And Jimmy got away and doubled back. You know what I mean? Like, a whole lot of shit was going on. You know what I mean? You know? When he got shot Dang. the five times, I told him. I told him. Look, bro, you disrespected this man on his phone for no reason. This man came humble. He came respectfully. Respectfully. He said this crazy shit. I've been knowing this man for ages. Man, you bring some gangbang shit to some shit that was some respect shit. And you talking this gangbang shit, but since you want a gangbang, I'm going to bag up from you, and I'm going to let you deal with that because you disrespected the man on my phone and called my phone to contact you to extend some respect and fix the situation. Be ready and shit. Nigga, I told him, I don't give a fuck if it's broad daylight. You got the police station. When the nigga see you, nigga, it's going to get live. I told him. You give these niggas too much credit. All right. Walked his ass in the club and got live. Oh, that's what he get. Niggas you know, is Yeah, nigga. You know I'm saying? All right, nigga. See, you ain't like that. I know you ain't like that. You don't run around. You got niggas around you that's like that. The money gone. The morale is gone. You ain't got that around you. This nigga's like that. Oh, he from the... This don't matter that a nigga from where he from. I, that should be killing the, like you know my niggas in like in the IE San Bernardino niggas quick to say all them niggas from IE nigga it's niggas out there burnt out put that work in like it's niggas out here burnt out put that work in like it's niggas in motherfucking Wichita Kansas and Mississippi yeah. and Alabama like, I, like nigga it don't yeah. matter where a nigga from nigga you you, and you know when they all breeding them everywhere what, one thing about Island. this black bloodline the one thing about this black Bloodline is nigga, we breed everything. Period. Talk that shit. This us is who we are as a race. So I be telling nigga, all right. All right, man, that little nigga. Okay, little nigga. Boy, they got some shit that'll break your ass down, nigga, to two foot eight. But go ahead on. Your world, my nigga, you win. Did you see how it happened? And once he got shot, once the nigga got shot. Right? He knew who did it. He ain't get out no motherfucking hot pursuit. Man, you know, yeah, nah, shit, shit was wild. Oh my God, shit was wild. Man, listen, you know bro, I'll never forget. For movies, I had to show none of that shit in the movie. Look, I had to meet with the nigga, shit. right? And I, I told him, I said, bro, all this strong army shit and all this Debo shit, we got to cut this shit out, bro. It's too much other business. Eventually, we ain't gonna be able to do business, bro. Let's go another way with this shit. This is like two thousand um, six, five, six, up somewhere around there. I told him he like fuck that. I'm doing it my way, my way, no way. I said, all right, homie, I'm gonna give you your space. Within twenty four hours, nigga, the barber knocked him out. But Man. see, remember yesterday? Remember yesterday, pop. I said, you are from that era where all y'all know how to do is go all the way in. He said that. He like, whack is from that era. Yeah. So, Suge is from that same era. How can you tell him to chill out? When he nah, but he not. Time? But you not. You got to repeat. Suge ain't from no era. Nigga, you tell me a nigga from Compton that was a gang member from the ground up who went to college and went over here and went over there and never seen the county jail and never seen juvenile hall. Why? But you was living that life back in that era. Show me one. That didn't come to him until he got the bag. When he got the bag, got to give him his credit. Mob James put all that shit around him. Damn. You know what I'm saying? He wasn't. He wasn't. You right. Now that I know, think about it, I've never seen over no there. Suge, not, like, see that picture I got of you on my PTR? I don't see no young pictures of Suge like that at 16, uh, 18, 20. Yeah, I don't see them type of pictures. That dude, that, 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 that dude was never a banger. Y'all like. gonna see it. No, he wasn't. That's what I'm saying. So, you know, we looking at you like, hey, look, nigga, we come from that. You doing too much. You know, when nigga tell you you doing too much, bro, we need to go another way with this shit, bro. Like, I ain't want to listen. And, and yeah. after that, because we had it to where you wasn't going to get nowhere near sure. We was going to swallow you up. 
and we even thought you was on something, nigga, it was going extreme. But when niggas start backing up, doing too much, my nigga, you just doing it because you feel like niggas is around you? Oh, no, we got families and kids to get on to because we start noticing he the only one making it home. This nigga dead. This nigga caught a case. This nigga got shot over what? Okay, what was the situation behind? Because he tripping over this because he on some power shit. Wasn't no real shit. No nigga got a way to put his life on the line by some real shit. Nigga just can't be doing no shit just because they can do some shit. That's how. When niggas bagged up, niggas start putting hands on him. Big job. He did some telling on Big job. You know what I'm saying? He, he sure got some shit on his name too. Big job from uh, job from Brooklyn. He used to be Acon's manager. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Big job, job from Brooklyn. He used to be Acon's manager. Good nigga, man. Yeah, Good nigga. yeah I remember that shit. Yeah, I remember that with him and Acon. <laughs> Yeah, he used to be Akon's manager. Yeah. And Ja looked up to sure. He told me out of his mouth, like, yo, Ja just did like 14, 15 years in the feds or so, you know, got out. Solid nigga. Nigga was a gangster. He was humble by this business. He like, yo, whack, this nigga should. I want to meet him, man. Nigga, this nigga open the door so we can do the shit we out here doing. You know what I mean? And this, that, and other. Them niggas in Arizona. And motherfucking Suge is tripping on detail at the time. The producer, nigga. And uh, Akon had just contracted detail to do an album or something. So Suge got it in his head because he got business with detail. Akon got to pay the debts because he's doing business with detail. Right? This, that shit, you, the title right there, Reed. So they Hell approached. Yeah. Akon them, Ja there. <clears throat> and Ja, you know, he excited to meet you. Sure, sure, what's up on with this? Yeah, man, I need to get with this nigga, you know, um, detail. That title should be Death Row Try to Bully the Game. Try to Bully the Industry. Nah, they was bullying shit. Yeah, I was about to say, they bullied for a long time. You, you you see you see Cuban Link came to get help and and then denied the shit when he got on stage. Like, I ain't never went and got no help from y'all, man. Fuck you he's a bully, y'all though. Cuban Link was like, "Come on, if you coming all the way from the East Coast to the West Coast to get help, yeah, them niggas must be the bullies. Straight up, that yeah. row must be the bullies." Bully, you came. Yeah. Shit, right. I don't know who they bully. They ain't bully Master P. Nah, well, don't, don't act like Master P. Don't act like Master P is unbullable. He, he can get bullied. I didn't say that. It ain't, ain't acting like he unbullied, but he told him when 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 Master P moved to, uh, to the west. Nah, yeah. some niggas, niggas is unbullable. Don't don't let Rick back. In. <laughs> Rick, Rick, did you just say unbullable though, bro? Oh, some niggas is unbullable, man. Don't oh, let some Rick niggas unbullable. <laughs> some niggas just be trying to be humble, man. In this moment. <laughs> No, I'm just saying, Master P. Master P. T- t- got Master P. Told that nigga he gotta move. Like that shit with Acom, man. That nigga was just humble. He kept like pressing. Yeah, should have kept. Oh, what? Well, what? I, I thought Wack was finishing the story. Wait, it, it shit went out. Yeah, I think he. I think he lost service. He confirming the story because that's what uh, Acom said. Uh, yeah, that's what Akon said. He said the nigga kept pressing and should kept pressing, pressing. And like, yo, nigga, we're gonna get, we're gonna get you, we're gonna get you. So we're gonna straighten you out as soon as um, detail. Yeah, as soon as detail sell a few joints, we're gonna make sure you get a piece. And then Shug was like, nah, I need that bread now. <laughs> and he got his ass whooped. Put him right on his. Hey, I'm gonna reset. I'm going to reset the room real quick. Hey, welcome to Trolls Nation. If you're new to the room, welcome. This is the Trolls Nation room on the Clubhouse app. If you're on stage or in the audience would like to come up or you want to stay on the stage, don't act bougie. Go ahead and troll up top. Hit the greenhouse. Join the club before I throw your ass in the audience. And make sure you follow all the moderators on stage. You see what's going on. Death Row was bullying the industry. Prove us wrong. So you already know, man. We be talking about it. Um, I got a little clip up there, man. Um, it was a fight at a golf course and you know what made me look it up because Nate Dog was talking about man he said whenever he went to death row man for anything he said he always took his blower he didn't give a fuck it was a birthday baby shower he said nigga I'm coming with a blower 
not playing around. And uh, this little golf shit that happened, I think it was Nate Dog was smacking people with the clubs, whack, 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 smacking shit on me. Anything that ran his way, he was swinging the club, cracking that shit open. Um, I yo, think I just yo, Red Man and Method Man was there. Shit was wild. That was again. That was again. BG knockout. Yeah, BG, BG knockout BG. said the nigga. He said the nigga broke his broke his brother arm. Nigga, he, oh, nigga, Nate fucked his brother up with that club, dude. <laughs> yo, yeah, that was good. R.I.P. Nate dog, my nigga. nigga. Okay, At the golf course. You know, I, I like I got a lot of regrets. Like, this is a lot of shit, you know. But let me finish telling you about that that shit, that detail shit. Um, he like, hold on, I'm gonna give you detail number right now. Suge said he talking shit, he mumbling and shit, right? So he like, sure, give me your phone. I'm going to put the number on your phone. So you know when you put a nigga in your phone and they already got the number, it pop up, right? So the nigga, so the nigga, y'all say, yo, sure, you already got detail number in your phone. Right? Mm. So the nigga, Suge, make a statement and it's, hey, yeah, niggas' mamas ain't gonna be able to walk to the store fucking with me, trying to hide this nigga detail. Now, what he didn't know was Ja Moms had just passed. Damn. Ja five knocked him out, broke his shit, slapped him right there in Arizona. Now, what Ja ain't talked about is how niggas gave statements and then tried to extort him, talking about give me 100000 and I'll make sure the, the, the statements go away. Y'all had to go down there, fight us song case, all that shit, bro. A lot of these niggas be on some fuck shit. Didn't niggas just don't be speaking on it. What? This city boy, didn't Shug sue them after that? After he got knocked nah, out, didn't Shug, he sue them too? Shug sued, Shug sued Kanye West when he got shot in the ass in Florida. It was his party. And then, you know what? I think he might have tried to sue him. But it wasn't a party. Um, wasn't a party, but the nigga kept telling John. I think John ended up taking some probation for that. You know, give me a hundred thousand and the shit could go away, that kind of shit. You know what I'm saying? You know, a lot of niggas is intimidated by shit because it should. I seen different cause we was the ones doing the biting. You know, even your dog, keep 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 Take your pet bull nigga that been biting for you and keep kicking that fighting pet bull in the ass. He gonna turn around and bite your ass. I don't think he won't bite your ass. He know he can bite your ass. You know what I'm saying? You know what you gonna Hell do? Yeah. You gonna run and holler like a banshee. You know what I mean? <laughs> Fuck you gonna do so. A lot of crazy shit that went on, bro. That um, you know, we kind of fell out, start falling out with the Ray J shit. Because I wouldn't let him extort Ray J. And he was trying hard as a motherfucker. I wouldn't go for it because Ray J was on my watch at the time. Um, you know, he was doing business with, um, what's the nigga, Rodney Jerkins, Dark Child. Behind some Miss LA shit. And Rodney was getting about 100 to beat at the time. Shug said, well, give me a discount, I get five. He said, all right. I give you five for 50 to beat, 250 for Miss LA. Long story short, this is some funny shit too, right? Now, this is some civilian shit. Y'all better pay attention. But long story short, she said, oh, all I want to use is one or two. He said, well, then you owe me 100 or 200. My other one's back. Well, I thought it was 50 to beat. It was 50 to beat if you got five, right? So she said, all right, well, fuck yeah. it. I don't want none of them. Send my money back. All right, cool. So Suge sent a certain individual down there to pick the money up. That, that ain't from our side. That's from the whole other side. He okay. waits a week. He waits a week and call Rodney Jurgens. Hey, homie, what's up with my money? He said, what you mean what's up with your money? You sent your man to get it. I gave it to your man. Man, I don't know that nigga. Nigga, that nigga uh... crip. Fuck you, get that nigga my... That, right? So Rodney, like, look, bro, I gave you money. My nigga, like, you sent your man. It's obvious he came and asked for that amount. I gave him that amount. I'm done with it. Yeah, all right, nigga. So you take, you know, we gonna see all this crazy shit, right? So now, when I go do the deal with Ray J, 
because Ray J and the Norwoods is tied into Rodney real close. He tried to say, well, Ray J, you responsible for my money. I wasn't going for that. Yeah, Ray J, went behind, he went behind my back and uh, gave the nigga 10000 But he said he just did that to look out for him as a homie. I ain't did that for that, right? Because mm. remember, it's a quarter million dollars on the line. So long story short, Roddy Jerkins had a studio down here in Hollywood. Um, this nigga, Shug goes down there, snatch Rodney up, shake him up a little bit, you know, pick him up off the ground kind of shit. Rodney called my phone. <laughs> Y'all better pay attention. Y'all better pay attention. Rodney calls my phone, right? That nigga said, hey, look, whack. Nigga came down here and violated my place of business, and he had his homies with him. So now, listen, I'm letting you know to let him know. I respect you, right, because you be staying out of the dumb shit. Tell that nigga I'm a God-fearing, tax-paying citizen. And if he come fuck with me again, I'm calling my Uh-oh. big homies. They said is the FBI. I never forget, <laughs> I never God, forget this shit. Dang. He said, tell him, but see, this for nigga. Everybody, everybody ain't part of them rules. That nigga said, let that nigga know if he come playing with me again, I'm calling my big homies. The guy. I said, all right. I told the nigga, hey, bro, nigga say he gonna call the feds. <laughs> he playing with him, better leave him alone. Yo, whack, and you what you say to him? I didn't see a motherfucker thing. thing. What the fuck you want me to say to him? <laughs> nigga, you and Flint, see, I already know. I know you on some food gays and shit. You know what I mean? I already know you on some food gays. I know you on some bullshit. Your whole shit you doing is bullshit, so you know. I'm not entertaining that motherfucking shit. That's out. That's why I would never That's put Jeff Row chain on. It wasn't gonna happen, my nigga. He put that chain on, you? or he owned your ass, boy. So you never owned one, or you just never wore it? Get my nigga, you try to get me one every day, every day. I'm the, bro, I don't need to wear that shit up from Paul Rue, bro. I ain't no motherfucking artist or none of that. I, nigga, we do business together. You know what I mean? Because see, once you put that chain on, now you fall up under that Simon. Call me Simon. A lot of niggas call that nigga Simon. Don't realize that means Simon says. Why I got to be the one to go? Because Simon said do it, nigga. Or take that chain off, that kind of shit. So I wanted to maintain my independence. You know what I'm saying? When we do, we do. When we, I don't work for you, nigga. We do shit together, my nigga. I'm going to move for you and put the play together. But if Wack don't want to show up to the office today or the death row or to this or the studio, God motherfucking damn it, I ain't got to show. I ain't. I ain't obligated. A lot of niggas wore them chains was on payroll, bro. And what he was paying them niggas was crumbs. I told them niggas, you niggas be up at 18, 19 hours a day. You take that 18, 19 hours and six days a week, add that shit up, and then divide that little 2,500 of money he giving you, you niggas, is, it, it, it's, a, it's a 5% of minimum wage. <clears throat> you niggas making $2 an hour, my nigga. So when old boy got booked for his death row chain, I know Suge was hot. If the chain had that much, you know what I mean, juice behind it, uh, what what they said, Orlando had booked somebody for the chain, and that's how the whole little... But he didn't really happened. get it. He tried to get it. He didn't oh, he get it. He snatched it, chain. but they got it back. They got it back in the squabble. He snatched it, though, but they got it back in the squabble. So he didn't have it. Oh, they... Oh, shit. They made it like in the movie. Yeah. They was pointing them out like, that's old boy who had who got the chain, like... Some shit like that. So he got, got his chain back and all that. That's why. Yeah, he, he didn't add a motherfucker. He don't pay for work too, though. Trayvon don't work too. Southside. Damn. Somebody from Southside. Somebody from Southside over there. He did some talking on or something. All these niggas is, you know. Bro, that's why I be telling niggas, like, bro, that shit ain't to be glorified. I'm quick to tell a nigga, hey, look, bro, I don't hang at the parks or the garages. That's out. Nigga, that shit like running around with fleas on you, my nigga. You gonna get bit. Everything ain't right, my nigga. These niggas is getting called up. Everybody ain't that, bro. Every nigga that got some money got the fuck away from it. 
oh, you ain't keeping it real, nigga. You ain't around here no more. Yeah, we hustled on the block to get off the block. Can't take the whole block with you. Yeah. Beats the purpose. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like, uh, um, it is, that's why when people be like, oh, whack, you want to be like, sure, nigga, I do not want to be 55 years old with 28, 80, 80% in the penitentiary. That's how. I do not and they said like he, that. And they said he on a PC yard or some shit. I don't know if that's yeah, true. Yeah, he PC'd up. No, no, that's real. He PC'd up. He PC'd up straight out of um, orientation. I know Man. that because the homie, the homie was down there. It's straight the there. Yeah, from, uh, <laughs> yeah, straight, yeah, the homie B. Rue from, uh, from uh, Ray J neighborhood, Center View Power Rue. He had the keys to the yard. He had life. And uh, he called me like, whack, sugar, and uh, Shug's in uh plat orientation building. I said, well, shit, get the yard ready for him. Y'all put a wall around him. Don't let nobody question him or nothing. Let him do his time. So, you know, he sent word to one of them people. I mean, who moving the cell phones around and, you know, let Shug know we talked to Quack. This is what the play is. Now, at the time, I had no idea he had did some fuck shit behind my back. I was oblivious to it with the label, right? I was oblivious, so we get the message. Yo, uh, Paul Rules up there said they talked to Wack, and uh, they got the yard waiting for you. They waiting on you. It's love. He thought it was a subliminal. When at the time, it was real. It was genuine. I had no, no idea. Yeah, no, yeah. He had tried to call into the label and tell the label to remove me from having access to the death row catalog from this, this, that, 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 this. <clears throat> the label head hadn't told me that. I didn't know, but he thought I knew. You know what I'm saying? So when he heard that, he thought that was one of them subliminals. Like, nigga, we finna throw your ass a party. Come on up. Oh, man. God. What? He thought it was a play. So he, went yeah, straight, yeah. he went straight to the PC guard. You know, it's a different shit now. The first year went, you know, he worked four, five, six hundred million dollars. He doing shit, nigga. What, nigga? I sign you tomorrow. When you parole next month? Niggas ready to kill the guards over this nigga. You know what I'm saying? Nah, different sugar in there right now. You, 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 you regular like everybody else. Hey, there's no music. There's no artists. There's no companies. You don't have nothing to offer or nothing to dangle in front of people to persuade them to do things for you. So, OG, what oh, is, is y'all relationship done or is repairable? No, nah, I, I can't fuck. You know why? Because it's partly our fault. He was always doing shit. We were just like letting it go. You know what I'm saying? You know, it, you know, it get to a point to where it's like, you know what? Enough is enough, nigga. You, you just you riding. They can't fuck with you. You know what I'm no saying? Good. It's, it's, it's all kind of shit. My nigga, listen, bro. When I heard them tapes, when that nigga was in the county jail, that fucked me up. Like, damn, nigga, I really, nigga, I buried your mama, nigga. I buried your mama three weeks before you did the tape. You just rotten. You just a hateful, jealous, envious. Blame me talking about I'm the reason why he got 28. Like I was driving the truck. It's a nigga crazy, man. Did Snoop dirty too? Dirty. And Snoop was really fucking with him. I called Snoop. Get everybody Once dirty. I got that interview with Six Nine. Once I got in that interview with Six Nine, I, I called Snoop and, and told him, "I like, look, bro, you hearing it out my mouth. You know what I say once, I'm gonna say twice. A nigga asked you where it come from. You can tell him it came from me. Stay off the phone with that nigga, bro. Cut ties. This nigga telling, he telling Six Nine. All kind of foul, a lot of shit, untrue shit about you. It's him. But then he called on your phone. Yeah, what up, bro? He called to check on you, man. Good to hear your voice. Then he get on the phone with six nine. Yeah, fuck that nigga Snoop. That nigga's a bitch. Let me tell you what that nigga did. And then once he started talking, that nigga worse than still Steven Spielberg. <laughs> he gonna keep adding to that shit, bro. Yeah, bro. Cause I'm hearing some of the shit six nine telling me. I'm like, bro, that shit ain't true. Hell no, that ain't happen. Like that nigga ain't 
You know, no, nah, they said they kept that nigga running. Nigga, that nigga, that nigga Snoop has some real, real Long Beach niggas with him. Some real riders. Real, real nigga with the wasn't no just Snoop running around here scared straight. That's out, bro. You know, Long Beach are all Crip City. So we couldn't even infiltrate. If we got in there, we had to get in and hope to get the fuck out. Ain't a blood gang exists in Long Beach. So, you know, every time he left, nigga, it wasn't nothing. It wasn't hard to mount up. We talking about a young Snoop Dogg getting it. You think they wasn't riding with that nigga? Shit. You know what I'm saying? That wasn't no walk in the park, bro. So, you know, all that Snoop was running scared and this, this, that. You know, that's a negative. Uh, how was that? How how was that relationship with Pop, man? Was it on some bully shit or some real love shit? Oh, no, nah, he really got love for Pop. Okay. Him and Pop was him and Pop shit was genuine. Okay. Yeah, that shit was genuine. Pop was the one running around that motherfucker on everybody else's head. Fuck this nigga, that nigga, this nigga, that nigga. And you know a lot of shit he, he was mad about. He had a reason to be mad about. It's a lot of fucked up secrets over there, bro. A lot of fucked up secrets. So Pop was one of them niggas like. Nigga, fuck that. Fuck that. Nigga, that nigga did what? Nigga, that's a violation. I don't want that nigga around me. Him and any nigga that's around him. I don't, you know, he's pushing that kind of line. So, but it was a genuine, like, little brother, big brother, little brother shit. I can't, I can't even knock that. So, uh, if y'all look up top, I pinged a, a song. It's by the game. It's called My Bitch. Where he did some 50 Cent, Jay-Z, and Suge Knight. And uh, on the Suge Knight lyrics, he said, "But uh, last but not least, my gangster bitch from Compton, always in and out of jail and shit. Bitch yeah, tried to burn Snoop, tight. stole chronic from Doc, blew the whole West Coast, even tried to fuck Pop. So he's going in on Suge Knight on this shit. And I had to wonder, why didn't Suge Knight kind of embrace the game? I think that would have been game as a death row artist. Game went there. Game, game went there first." Uh, he ain't with this shit. You want to fuck with him? I remember that track. That track fire. Oh, he didn't want to fuck with him. Okay. He didn't want to fuck with him. He went there first. He didn't want to fuck with him. Um, you know, he went, he went to, uh, he went out a few people comp and basic. They didn't want to, you know, back then you had a, she was the name of that record company. The, the guy should killed had a record company. Uh, fuck his name of that cool was his company. Show chop and all that was signed over there. You know, okay. he went that way first. He went that way first. He went, you know, game tried to keep it calm. They want to fuck with it. And he ended up in the Bay. Guess who did a lot of games first production of it? I'm going to fuck you up yeah. with this one. Cool. You know who did a lot of games first production in the Bay? That cool. JT. That JT, the bigger figure that album game did, guys, oh, the empire. come out the pimp guys, with the bald head. Yeah, see, the owner of Empire produced a lot of those songs. Oh damn! Yeah, guys, he was a producer before he, you know what I'm saying? Before he was anything, he was an artist too. Guys, he produced a lot of them records, a lot of them beats. He told me the other yeah. day. He, he, he got a song him and Game did together. Told him, nigga, you being who you are today, the owner of Empire, you need to NFT that song like a motherfucker. I would do it. Oh, yeah. Damn. You know, that's why. Yeah. Wow. And then JT, the bigger figure, he, um, he took the album to Koch and did some bozo shit. He sold the album for $250,000. Koch turns around. They watch Interscope, get the release date of the documentary, and they release their album the same day as the documentary, put their album right on the side of that one. Niggas was confusing one with the other. Uh, yeah, that's that's why. What, what's, whatever happened with I, I, I wonder why Crooked Eye didn't come. Crooked Eye hardest niggas because he was, <clears throat> he was at Death Row at a time where Death Row had no distribution. And Death Row had no staff. Everybody was gone. And Crooked oh, was so he came at the motherfucker. Oh, me, that's in New York to Cali, love Crooked Eye. That nigga Crooked was hard as a motherfucker, bro. Uh, 
I remember Suge had him. It's a well, he was on a dysfunctional family soundtrack. But they let Cricket remix a bunch of Tupac songs. And they flipped the beats. I think the producer was a nigga named Vega. Vega. Some shit like that. Damn, yeah, now Crooked Eye was dope. I I don't know why he didn't get the torch. At that like, time, if he would have been, it wasn't it wasn't there. It wasn't there, bro. Think about it. Did no projects come out <clears throat> when Sure got out of the name one. Yeah. Yo Reed. Yeah. What's up with it? Ping that joint right there with that joint right there with Crooked Eye did. That's a joint me, Crooked Eye, Charlie Bought with Crooked. He killed that shit on that shit. Crooked Eye was tough. Ping that time. Yeah, he's a uh, nigga was special, man. He still is today. Good dude, man. Never changed up, man. Shout out to Crook. Hell yeah, man. I'd like to see some Crooked Eye, man, or interview with some. With Left him. Eye. That'd be Left hard. Eye. He fucked her life up, too. Yeah, they was just talking life. about that. Left Eye. Being on, on yeah, the road. we changed her name. We changed her name to Nina. I got like seven, eight songs in the vault on her. People ain't never heard. Change her name to Nina. And, um, Hold on. You said you got about seven, eight songs from Lisa Left Eye Lopez that no one's heard yet? Yeah. In the yeah. vault? I never heard Death Row name Nina. Nina. Y'all heard it Y'all first. Death Row name Nina, yo. Wow. That's crazy. I need to pull them out. I need, I, to pull them out and, uh, I need to pull them out and then take them over there to these. A lot of the Atlanta artists and let them bless it and just put get them out there. But now nah, she was in yeah. there right. Uh, the homie was helping her right. Um, the realist. His real name is for y'all, for y'all out of Texas who you know y'all Texas history. If you go to the Above the Rim soundtrack, the rapper by the name of Teninikin on there. That's who the realist was. She just changed his name. He was trying to create a, a fake Tupac. <clears throat> really look like him. He used to be in there making him study and how to hold his champagne glass and tie the bandana on his head. Shit was some real sickening shit. And that's what was going on. Uh, yeah, that's crazy. Yo, um, Whack, I think she 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 was um she was rocking with Death Row. Like that's around the time when she got killed. Right? I mean, one time she got what I'm trying to tell you, my nigga. This is what I'm trying to tell you. One thing led to another. You know what I'm saying? Like if nigga would have kept it business, it would have been business. And in this world, I I, I don't blame the female. Because, you know, females get vulnerable, my nigga. And right nigga getting their ear, get them misleading them. And they taking it for business and this, this, or that. You know what I'm saying? And then you, you throwing them off they, off they square. That's what led to her psychological meltdown. To where she, nigga just kind of like, you got to go. Next thing we know, she over there had an accident within like 10 days. Crazy. You know what I'm saying? If it had been what it was supposed to have been here, she wouldn't have been there. Hell yeah, mm-hmm. man. Wow. Yeah, that's crazy. I wanted to see the motherfucking penthouse. She beat that motherfucker the bitch with a bat. Ask Ray J. He was living in there with her. Uh, what? Beat that motherfucker to a Nigga, we all we came up that elevator. You said Ray J was there. living there too. Yeah, he was living there. We put him there to to watch her, keep her company. Oh, uh, hell yeah! But uh, she on Wilshire now. Uh, she uh, she got high because niggas was playing with her. You know what I mean? Playing with her emotions and nigga, she got that bat, nigga, and beat that motherfucking penthouse, hundred thousand dollars. Two hundred thousand dollar paintings on the wall. She beat that shit to a pulp, nigga. Oh Ty, shit, we, yo, yo, that's my Ty, word. We right? open it. Time we open yeah. up the elevator. We come up because that's when the elevator come up in your living room. The penthouse drink, nigga. She standing there dripping, drenched sweat, nigga. Veins pulse, back, nigga. I remember that. Over. I remember that. Yeah, I remember nigga, that story. Say, listen, my yeah. nigga, hey, what? Yeah. <laughs> so. 
So then we get into the yacht, to the P phone, right? Nigga sure got like a hundred ten foot yacht. And uh he telling you, oh, baby, go ahead on and shower up. We're gonna meet you on the deck, you know, this, that chef, whatever, all this shit, right? So she go in the shower, she was like, let's go. I think where we going? We jump off the yacht before we get off the deck, off the oh, damn. Nigga, we jump in the car about 15 minutes later, we get a call. Nigga, it's the motherfucking nigga, the captain of the yacht. Uh, Mr. Knight, I think we have a problem. What's going on? Uh, she's telling me to take the yacht back in. Uh, but nah, keep her out here. Oh, kind of, uh, I have this butcher knife to my neck. What am I supposed to do? <laughs> Damn. Yeah, that's when he sent her up out of here. Like, you got to go. Yeah. She left, went over there, and nigga, she had the accident. Never came back. Yeah. That's wild. Hey, can you tell us a little bit about the rup? Rup. Well, you know the corrupt 